Welcome back to the channel. I'm Chase and this is All Things Rim. Today we are doing the in-depth review of the D1 Milano Ultra Thin, specifically the Ocean Dial. Now, if you guys are interested in this watch specifically, look at the link down below through my eBay account. I am selling this because, well, the watches purchased on this channel are from my own pocket. So normally what I'll do is I'll review a watch, then I'll sell it at a discount on eBay to fund my next watch purchase for review. So if you guys are interested, link down below, not sure how long it's gonna be there. But if you're interested, there it is. So what are we talking about today? Today we are talking about, again, the Ultra Thin by D1 Milano, specifically the Ocean Blue. Honestly, I can tell you that I really don't wanna get rid of this watch, I really like it, but sort of need to move on and get other things to review. Now let's just flip the camera around and dive right into the review. Okay, and now the full in-depth review of the D1 Milano, the Ultra Thin. Specifically, this is the Ocean model. Now, the case on this is 316L stainless steel, which is the industry standard, of course. And you can see that it is ultra thin. Not only is the case ultra thin, but you can see the bracelet is ultra thin as well. Now, the case size on this is going to be 38 millimeters in diameter, which is actually pretty perfect size for most people. Most people hover in between 38 and 40 millimeters as a perfect size. This watch is not overly large. I do not have my calipers. I can't find them, and I'm not sure what the lug width is on this, but it's not very much bigger than the actual diameter itself. Now the lugs on these are integrated. It's an integrated bracelet and the outside lug is going to be sort of a reversed lug. It does stick out a little bit, but not really that much. It's not really enough when you see it on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. It's really not enough at all to cause any type of you know, impedance or anything like that. In fact, this thing slips so well underneath the cuff, it is ridiculous. And that has to do with the fact that it is only six millimeters thick. Now to achieve this, of course, it is a quartz watch, which doesn't bother me because you see there is no second hand on this. It's a very clean and simple dial. Now clearly this does have sort of some uh, styling points from the Nautilus, from the Royal Oak. That is absolutely clear. However, this is an affordable alternative to one of those luxury watches. Now, this is not a direct homage like you'd find on a Parnas or a Pagani Design, um, but it does have the styling cues. If you wanna go something a little different that is still affordable, I would recommend this watch, especially because it is ultra, it is ultra thin, which is in the name right there, just above the six. Now the case is gonna be a mix between brushed and polished, and you can see it right here. And even on the macro shots, and I'll show you guys, they did a very good job at finishing this watch. Honestly, this watch is just under $400 on their website, which I honestly think after having this watch is quite a steal. In fact, the brushing on this, the polishing on this, Jay, they just, they didn't really skimp when they finished this watch. Now the bracelet is a brushed bracelet. It does have sort of an H-shaped design right there in the links. Honestly, one of the things that I really love about this is it is ultra thin, just like the bracelet, but the links are small enough to wear. You can easily adjust it to the size of your wrist. I mentioned this in the unboxing and the first impressions. Really a big fan of that. Honestly, having this for a few days, I've been wearing it on the wrist and it just does fit perfectly. Now, one of the things that I didn't like in the beginning was this hidden butterfly clasp. A lot of clasps like this normally have a small push button design on the side, makes it a little easier. However, this is not. This, you dig your nail underneath and pry it open. Really not a big deal, or you can take it from the side and just pop it off. It does have a proper milled clasp. Now, as I've been wearing this more and more, now you can feel that it does have a, you can actually hear it, like it does have a hard click. That has loosened up slightly over time and I assume it's gonna do the same thing. In no way am I ever concerned about this popping off the wrist. You see, the case back is just a screw down or a screw in, screw in, screw down, doesn't matter. It's held in by screws, offers 50 meters of water resistance, which is enough 
However, you can see that there's sort of a blank case back there. That's because on their website, they do offer the ability to have these engraved for I think like 20 bucks. So if you wanted to get your high schooler or someone you love or whatever, a moment in life that you want to have stamped on the back of this, they offer it and a lot of watch companies don't offer that anymore. Now you would have to take something like a Rolex if you wanted, take the case back off, and then take it to someone to engrave it or take the watch to a, a specialty engraver. But this offers the ability to, you know, put something on the back for someone that you love. One of the things I really do like about this is the crown. The crown has like this black onyx gem. It's not really onyx, but it does look like it. I mean, it could be resin. I'm really not sure. But honestly, it just gives a, a lovely you know, styling cue for the watch. If you guys have ever held a Cartier, you know that they have a blue crown. This is black, and I honestly, I think it looks absolutely perfect. It matches this watch 100%. Now, on the outside here, this is a piece of dead flat sapphire crystal with AR coating. Doesn't really specify if it's on the top, doesn't really specify if it's underneath. I hope it's underneath the sapphire because a lot of people in the past have complained about Omegas who have it on the front side, as you start to wear the watch, the sapphire is not gonna scratch, but the AR coating may, and then it looks like it's scratched up. Doesn't specify if it's on top or underneath. I hope it's underneath. Now the dial on this is gonna be the matte ocean blue dial. They did a very, very good job with the styling on the dial. You can see it's very simplistic. Double batons at the 12, single baton indices around the outside, and they're applied extremely nice. Very good on the quality control on this watch. During the macros, I didn't find anything on the dial that wasn't set perfectly to include the printing of the D1 Milano at the 12 and the ultra thin just above the six. You can see it doesn't have anything down below like you know, normally it'll say like Swiss made or Japan movement or something. They kept it extremely clean. Really love the way this looks. Now, as this watch is ultra thin, that means that the weight of this watch is extremely light. Now this comes in at 86 grams. 86 grams for a full stainless steel watch with a stainless steel bracelet is extremely light. Normally you'd see something under 100 grams where it would be a stainless steel watch with a leather band or a rubber strap or something similar, not necessarily on a stainless steel bracelet. Mostly watches that come fully stainless steel with a stainless steel bracelet come in at around 130 to 150 grams. So this is nearly half the weight and you can actually feel it on your wrist. This thing nearly disappears. In fact, one of the things that I do love about the ultra thin is the fact that it does just slip underneath any cuff, any sweater, or if you just wanna wear it with a t-shirt. I mean, it's, it's really, really good. Now again, inside this is a quartz movement. It's a Citizen Miyota 1L22 quartz, which doesn't bother me in the slightest. That means I'm not gonna have to reset it. That means I'm not gonna have to go through. If I wanna take this off for a while, I don't have to reset the time, not a big deal. One of the things that I don't like is the fact that a quartz movement most have second hands and it has that ticking second hand and that just bothers me. It doesn't bother some people, bothers me. If I'm gonna have a quartz watch, I love the fact that they left the second hand off. That means this thing is gonna be accurate for a very long time and I'm not gonna have to change the battery for years. And it gives that simplistic design of these beautifully finished sword hands, the hour and the minute only. Now, when I first got this watch, and here's a wrist shot, when I first got this watch, I needed to remove four links from it, two from each side so that it fits perfectly on the wrist. And honestly, this I would say is slightly loose at the moment. However, the moment I do any type of activities, this thing's gonna snug right up and it's gonna fit perfectly. This is the only watch so far that I've been able to fit this well to my wrist that has a butterfly clasp at the bottom. Now, honestly, I've said in the past, I'm not a big fan of butterfly clasps. However, the way that these links are small enough, and you can see that they have a very nice taper down to a smaller clasp here. Um, the way that they did this with the very, very small links made it so that it was easily fit to my wrist. 
Plus, you can see right here just how thin it sits on my wrist, both the bracelet and the watch. Honestly, I don't really have much to say about this that's negative. Now, this butterfly clasp is going to sort of annoy some people because you have to have nails. You have to be able to dig underneath and then pull it out, or you can just grab the sides and you can just pull it. It's either, either way, but it does, it does fit very hard, very solid. Is that really a negative? I don't know, because honestly, if it was loose and it unclasped easy, it would be more likely to fall off your wrist. So it's not really a complaint. Now, again, I do not have my calipers and I'm not able to see what the actual lug to lug is, but you can see right here on my seven and a quarter inch wrist that it, it fits relatively well. It fits nearly perfectly, even though it has those like reversed end links right there that may protrude out slightly. The 38 millimeter case size is perfect. And I really love the matte blue ocean dial. And I love the simplistic design of this watch. Sometimes a lot of companies, what they'll do, and I'm gonna point out Rolex right here, is sort of like the Rolex Submariner, right? It's just filled with lines of garbage. This doesn't need it. Really love the fact that they did it the way they did. And well, what else is there to say? Fits wonderful on the wrist. Okay guys, now what do you think about the D1 Milano? Do you think it's as good as I think it is? Do you like it? Do you hate it? What do you guys think? Leave a comment down below. Now I have a lot of videos coming up in the future. I do have a stack of stuff to review. Hopefully I'll be getting a video out every three to four days. I wanna to try to do at least two videos a week. So make sure you guys are doing a few things. Hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment on the content you guys would like to see on this channel. Make sure you guys are hitting that notification bell so you guys will get the notifications when I drop those videos every three to four days. Now I will see you in the next one.